It's very hard to just suddenly have your legs taken away from you. You're not going to get better. This is how you're going to be for life. It was described as a fairly routine procedure. It was just uh, slightly above what I'd had done before, but with some metal work, that was the way it was described. The original operation was because I'd slipped two discs. This was the third time that that disc had slipped. This time they, he wanted to take out both discs at both levels, fuse the bones, uh, to prevent any further leakage of, of discs uh, and then put a metal cage around both of those levels and then six pins to hold that cage in place. Mr Reynolds, the surgeon, came in to see me and said, can you feel this? I couldn't feel anything. It was quite worrying just from that second onwards. Right. He just said, you um, are going to experience some issues because nerves are very delicate things and we've jangled them about quite a lot so you're probably just suffering a, a temporary loss of sensation. Afterwards when it became clear to me that it, it wasn't temporary um, then you know I was panicked but I was daunted you know the whole thing was nerve-wracking. Would I get any feelings back in my legs whatsoever? Um, what would it mean to me, to my family? What would I, you know, what would I do basically? I feel let down uh, by the NHS, um, not just because of the fact that you know that one surgeon made a mistake and then clearly lied about it. I was never taught how to walk uh, on my crutches in my Zimmer frame. I was never taught any of that. But then when you get to the spinal unit, you are taught all of these things, and uh, suddenly you realise that you probably can deal with everything, it's just that you needed the information in order to deal with it. You needed the truth, you needed to know um, you know, what your diagnosis was and once you can accept that as a person then you can then move on. Could you pass me a, a gabapentin please, Abby? I am very determined to become independent and it is something that I've spoken about with my psychologist. Last year when I went into rehab I was given a wheelchair, one that my husband or my daughter, my son can get out of the car and I can get into it and we could go perhaps down by the river visiting friends. The car's already been adapted so I, I just need to pull that with my hand and, and I can drive myself. I don't like being dependent on other people. I've always worked and um, helped other people. It's not in my nature to be helped, so I do find that quite difficult. No, you didn't want John to bring him, so Tina was going to bring him. Or... You're given a wheelchair and your your eyes are open because you you suddenly think, well, I can actually go out. There are lots of schemes running in lots of towns where you can borrow um, wheelchairs, electric wheelchairs, and things but you're limited on time then, so you have to do things within a certain time scale and you have to be in town and you don't always want to be shopping in town. You don't always have the money to go shopping in town. I think she's reacted better than anyone else could have. Um, I think if it happened to a weaker person, then they would have just like retracted, gone back to their house and stayed in their living room, stayed in their bed. Whereas mum, I think, wants to just adapt her life rather than change it so that she can still live with all her grandchildren and yeah, be the fun, fun mum. Hey? You made painting. You made what? Painting. Oh, painting? Yes, with my dad's. A daffodil. A daffodil? What's this on your arm? 
Um, What's that? Paint. Paint? Oh, what are we going to do? <laughs> so that's okay, Nanny. We can wash that. We can wash that, can't we? Where's Nanny been? You? Yeah, where have I been? You've been to doctors. What are the doctors doing? What are the doctors doing? Doctor fixing your leg. Fixing my leg. Oh, yeah. oh, that's nice. I think everyone misses their mum when they go to uni, but for me, I think it's that a little bit more difficult because I knew that she was going to be at home a lot by herself. Mum, I don't think really wanted me to go in her heart, but in her head knew I wanted, like, I wanted to do it. Although mum can cope well with being at home, it was difficult for me knowing that she's going to be sat, nothing to do, no one to talk to. I think our relationship's better now. When I do come home, it's not so much that I'm a carer anymore. So I can just release and come home and relax. Because I know mum's getting more and more independent all the time. The only people that I feel, you know, have um, done their job correctly is the um, National Spinal Unit that does the rehabilitation. When I play basketball, um, at the Gutman Centre in Stoke Mandeville, um, you just feel like you come alive, you know, and you have a laugh and um, you pull each other out of your wheelchairs and it's, it's just fun. Everyone I've met so far, especially in the spinal unit, they all seem to have the same sense of... Wanting to play but not so professional. Yeah, determination and... Um, you know, they yeah. they see they try and see the funny side of everything. Um, I suppose it just helps them get by. It's time to just start doing things. Finished up with all these appointments and everything medical. Just want it all to stop now. And I think a lot of people that are in wheelchairs and um, things like that, they are eventually at some point they do get to that stage where they're determined yeah and and they develop a sense of humor go ah! the sense of humor becomes real rather than an act um, so yeah that's where I want to get to the same stage and Florida and Florida most importantly. Yeah, most importantly.